Today we're going to talk a little bit about ordering fractions on a number line. Um, this allows us to compare them and think about how they how they relate to the whole number 1 and 0 and each other. So, if we have our number line, the first thing that we want to do is label our what we call our benchmarks. And when I say our benchmarks, I mean the important fractions that we can have in the middle of the number line between 0 and 1 that help us to figure out where our fraction should be properly placed. So we know, obviously, we're going to start with our half. So we've got 1 half and 2 halves. Now we're going to also think about placing our fractions of the fourths in our number line. So I know that our fourth is going to be right here, 1 fourth. And here, obviously, one half is the same as one or two fourths. And then here I have three fourths. All right, and then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to be placing our thirds fractions. And our third goes here in between a fourth and a half. And two thirds goes right here. Now I've divided up my number line into thirds, so there's one-third, two-thirds, and three-thirds, and I can take my same number line and divide it into fourths, so there's one-fourth, and two-fourths, and three-fourths, and there's my four-fourths, and then last but not least, I have my number line also divided into halves. Here's one-half and two-halves. Okay, and so now those are going to be helpful for me for figuring out where my number line needs to go. So now let's say I want to place a fraction on my number line. So let's say I have the fraction 5 eighths. Okay, and that's a fraction that I want to place on my number line. So what I'm going to do is, first I need what I need to think about is when I'm working with fractions with the denominator 8, I know that 0 is 0 eighths, because remember I'm using my denominator here of 8, so I can properly place 5 eighths. So I know that, that 0 is 0 eighths, I know that 1 is 8 eighths. And I know that half is 4 eighths. So I know that 5 eighths is going to fall somewhere within this area because um, I also have to fit in here. Not only am I fitting 5 eighths in here, I have 5 eighths in here, 6 eighths, and, whoops, 6 eighths, and 7 eighths. So those fractions have to fit in there somewhere. And so what I need to do though is I need to figure out, since I'm trying to evenly place this one, this one, this one and this one. This is the one I'm five eighths is the one I'm worried about. I want to see since I figure out it's probably going to go somewhere in this area. I'm going to compare it to two thirds to see if it's larger than if it's going to go on this side of two thirds or if it's going to go on this side of two thirds. Okay, and so the way that I do that is cross multiplication. So I have five eighths and two thirds and I want to decide if which one is larger and so the way that I do that is by that cross multiplication so 5 times 3 is 15 and then I'm going to do 8 times 2 which is 16 so 2 thirds is actually a larger fraction and 5 eighths is just a bit smaller from that so I'm going to go back now to my number line, and I know that 5 eighths is going to fall just about right in here, okay, because we said on that previous slide that 2 thirds is just a bit bigger than 5 eighths, so two, 5 eighths is going to go right there on my number line, okay? Okay, so now we're going to take the fraction 2 ninths and we're going to decide where it needs to go on the number line. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to think about this number line as 0 since I'm, well, let me backtrack here. Okay. 
Since I have two ninths, I want to think about um, my number line as ninths. And so my zero is the same as zero ninths, and my one is the same as nine ninths. So I want to decide, first of all, also, what it would be my halfway point between zero and nine. And I know nine split in half, it can't be split in half evenly. And I'm going to end up with a remainder when I divide nine into two pieces. And so um, I know that about half of nine is 4.5 or four and a half. Well, I have two. And so two is obviously going to fall somewhere between zero and four, somewhere in this region of the number line right here. Okay, so I know that in this number line I need to fit in 0 ninths, 1 ninth, 2 ninths, 3 ninths, and 4 ninths. Okay, so I need to decide kind of where it's at. Um, obviously it's going to be um, maybe less than 1 fourth, but I also know 1 eighth is in here too, because it's half of 1 eighth. Half of 1 fourth is 1 eighth. So I need to decide if it's bigger than or less than 1 eighth and 1 fourth. Okay, so I'm going to compare my fraction of 2 ninths to 1 eighth. All right, so we're going to do that over here. 1 eighth, 2 ninths. We're going to do our cross multiplication. 1 times 9 is 9. 8 times 2 is 16. So 2 ninths is bigger than 1 eighth. So let's go back to our number line. And I know that it's going to be right around in here where 2 ninths is going to be. So 2 ninths, boom, right in there. Okay? So your goals are, if you go back and review, what we want to do is we want to look at our number line. Let me fast forward. We want to look at our number line. We want to first place our benchmarks, 0, 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, and 3 fourths, and then I want to place my thirds. I've got my 1 third, and I've got my 2 thirds, and I'm going to take my fraction, whatever fraction that might be. Uh, let's say in this case, maybe it's... 3, uh, let's say 3 elevenths, and so I'm going to think of my fraction, my numbers on my number line, as elevenths. So here I have 0 elevenths, here I have 11 elevenths, and half of 11 is going to be about 5.5. I can even put that over 11 to make me think about that. So that means then, since I'm working with 3, it's going to fall in this half of the number line. So now I'm going to start doing some comparisons and thinking about the numbers that will work in there. I know that I need to be able to fit 1 11th and 2 11th and 3 11th and 4 11th and 5 11th over here on this part of the number line. So I need to start comparing 3 elevenths. I'm going to see if it's bigger or smaller than 1 fourth. So we're going to compare using cross multiplication. 3 elevenths was the fraction that I was working with. I want to see if it's bigger or smaller than 1 fourth. So cross multiply. 3 times 4 is going to give me 12. 11 times 1 is going to give me 11. So I know 3 elevenths is actually larger than 1 fourth. So I'm going back here, and I know that on my number line, 3 elevenths is going to be just a little bit larger than 1 fourth. All right, good luck.